The Glimmer Man is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world that he's not crazy or stupid. I love you too. He's crazy and stupid. Now get your ugly white ass out of here. It starts off with a quick message for the audience. Now go f yourself, cause here comes 90 minutes of nonsense. Seagal's a lieutenant who's also new to the department and partners with a detective. I'm Lieutenant Cole, been assigned to the case. F it, okay. We call this guy the family man. He's killed six families in the last eight months. He sees you read his file, but he's up to eight now. Hey, Jim. Just found two more. Finally, he thought you never would. After showing off his handiwork and sick finger paintings, the day goes from good to great when they get amazing news. Possible suicide at the St. Edmunds School. This is the kind of shit Seagal lives for. No, 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 see, that's suicide. We're homicide. So they make a deal that if he gets him there quick, he'll make sure there's plenty of homicides. I'm going, I'm going. When they get there, Seagal shows off his brilliance with a cunning plan. Johnny, I want you to step over to the window and look at me. But it was just a trick, and he's not actually hovering in front of a third story window. <laughs> now he's confused as shit at what the point of that was. So Seagal tells him, we're only seven minutes in, get f used to it. I don't want to shoot you and you don't want to be dead. One of those is a lie, but which one it is flips when he sees he's not suicidal. He's here to terrorize women and children <laughs> and make this one crazy bitch really happy. So Seagal digs deep and gives a master class in emotion. Sorry, Johnny. Put the gun down. Seagal tells him he wants to help him because he reminds him of a young him. He was already going through some shit that was not cool. With no time or ability to think, he pulls out a trick he hasn't used since his tummy gummy days by bouncing here and there and everywhere. Now, the dad shows up to thank him like a total dick. I'd just like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. The fucking nerve! After that hurtful experience, Seagal goes to the one place that always cheers him up. And he already feels so much better. They tell him for the last time it's not a strip club, but he's not phased. An interstitial fibrosis. Okay, enough of that boring shit. She got nice tits. Precisely. So he does the normal thing of cutting into her boobs. And oh my god, this is so much easier when they're not screaming. Okay. Now that Seagal has another souvenir, he can get back to whatever it is he thinks cops do. Luckily, his partner doesn't have to see what that is. That's because you'd lose your job if you did. When they come across these guys who are being super suspicious by breaking into a car that doesn't have any women or children in it. I'm confused. He always is, but oh thank God, it was just an ambush. What do you want? You? Dead. Yeah, so does everyone. Take a fucking number. Seagal tells them he has a secret, but will only tell them if they all bunch up and get really close. What does that mean? It means slappity slap. <laughs> slap and Steven unleashes a barrage on these poor sons of bitches. And the world of slap dancing will never be the same again. His partner sums it up the only way you can. Like Bruce Lee only better. The next day, something terrible happens. That was his ex. He had dibs. How could someone do this? But there is a silver lining. I gotta go tell my kids that their mother's dead. He means gets to. Oh yeah, now that's the good stuff. But all their crying really worked up an appetite. So excuse me, sir. Fuck you. And fuck you, too. Then it's just a matter of kicking a businessman in the nuts, stealing some food, kind of cranky. performing a magic trick, 
Good to see you, buddy. Maybe a little sumo. <laughs> with a dick grab, you know, normal shit. Since they don't seem to know, they're supposed to be investigating something, and Seagal is just going on a rampage. <laughs> The movie finally moves this shit along by just having a lady call. I think I know who you're looking for. And tell them who they're after. Christopher Maynard. Which is nice, but how about you get off your ass and get them some evidence? So Mrs. Doubtfire tells him this ain't her first fucking day, so take these realistic photos and eat shit. That's as airtight as it gets, but Seagal gets to him first and tells him to watch out for that first step. It's a doozy. He asks Seagal how he got to the killer so fast, so Seagal tells him what killer. Now he's up for his yearly polygraph, and these are all standard questions. Did you kill your ex-wife? Yes. Did you shoot Christopher Maynard? You know he doesn't remember names, but yeah, probably. Was it in self-defense? No. Are you Detective Jack Cole? I don't think that's pertinent to this investigation. He doesn't have to stand for this. In fact, he refuses to stand for everything. So fuck you guys, he's out. Now he's breaking into the home of the dead couple who were staying at a shitty motel despite owning their own house when son of a bitch someone else breaks in at the exact same time. Then while Seagal's pretending like he can read, he attacks which was a close one, because if he had connected with a weapon like that, it could have been slightly annoying. So Seagal beats on his nuts for a while, and then he runs away. Right to the asshole from earlier, and tells him about Seagal. What was he doing there? Mostly just pretending to read and fighting birds. You know, Seagal things. You should have gone through that house days ago. There was already police tape up, so he thought he did. It's not his fault. This movie's continuity is non-existent. I hope not, for your sake. Realizing you can say whatever incoherent bullshit you want, and nobody will stop you, because they just want to get the fuck out of there, Brian Cox starts rambling nonsense. To the people he hunted, he was known as the Glimmer Man. There'd be nothing but jungle, then a glimmer. Then you'd be dead. He asks how the dead people told him this, but fuck off, he's on a roll. Why isn't he still with you? One native on us made up his own assignments. Now that sounds like him. <laughs> then he gives him a brain teaser. Two cops, you and the boy. Three of you have to go. You can choose which three. He goes with him, the boy, and one cop, but fuck you. He ain't telling you which one. And just when you think things are getting a little weird, you get to picture them playing in the pool together. Come on in. The water's fine. And everything's normal again. Then his apartment explodes. Now, Seagal's arrested. We have a warrant for your arrest. They never say why, and he never asks, but there's so many valid reasons, and he's probably gonna kill them anyways. It's LA. There's a lot of potholes, and he swears these were all on accident, but Seagal's being a total dick about it. And while Seagal pistol whips the f out of them for like 25 minutes, hats off to the driver who refuses to ease off the gas even just a little. Now they're barreling down the road at a high rate of speed that's increasing fast and Seagal has mere minutes to react and manages to roly poly his way to safety. Just when you think this can't get any dumber, you remember who you're watching and that it always can. He chicken runs all the way here so he can ask how his Seagalling is going. Some bad shit from Russia. So far so good, and here's a neat trick. 
Shit. He thought you were a nun, but whatever, you get the point. Now it's your turn. Count to 30 and then check on him. Yes, of course. And there's a dead body back there. Someone should probably do something. Now that we got the shocking reveal that the Russians are involved, which I thought we knew back then, he does the normal thing of shooting Brian Cox with inverted bullets or some shit, where he fires and then aims. But you can't argue with results. And they find out it's all about money. To get rich, wow. Which we also knew back then. Because the pay is so good. But fuck it, now that we know twice, he and the Russians are never seen or mentioned again. Now that they've hit the sweet spot of convoluted mess that falls apart if you think about any of it. While also being so fucking stupid that nobody ever will. I'm gonna go suck on some deer penis, I'll be all right. They can start wrapping this shit up by having everyone just start shooting everyone. Positively Shakespearean. They can't tell if that's sarcasm or not, but just to be safe, fuck him first. <laughs> Seagal is fucking livid that someone would compare his genius to a hack like Shakespeare. Then his partner points out that this door didn't have a D on it a few seconds ago, and Seagal quickly changes the subject. I'm stupid. Their superior numbers are no match for his tactical back into a corner maneuver combined with his legendary just standing there elusiveness. Everyone in there's dead, but Seagal still has bullets left, so they're going hunting. Where do you live? On the corner. Well, get your ass around the corner. Seagal will be by shortly. He's gonna love this. Then he's on the roof for some fucking reason. And oh my god, what's with you and apartments? Out here! Luckily, Seagal has all his repelling gear because who fucking cares at this point? Oh. Is a now that that pointless shit is done, Seagal shines his hair real quick and heads down. Now, if he can just make it past this guy, breathing super loudly and pretending to read a newspaper, he'll be home free. Holy shit, it was Seagal the whole time. Then it's just a double slap, tap, tap, slap, slap, tap, slap, tap, and a woman chasing him up the stairs. Then they do this for a while because it's supposed to increase the thrill until one of them has some self-respect and ends this utter embarrassment. But it's Seagal and he always has to end on a low note. Do me a favor, tell my wife I'm alive and well. Fuck you, she suffered enough. 